What if I told you the next big step for humanity isn't on Earth but on the Moon? Sounds wild, right? But it's true. Nations around the world are gearing up for a new kind of race, a race to the Moon. Why? Stay tuned because India's got some serious plans and they might just change the game. It's been over 50 years since the US sent humans to the moon during that legendary space race with the USSR. You know, the one that ended with Neil Armstrong's iconic moonwalk in 1969. Back then, it was all about showing who was boss during the Cold War. Fast forward to today and the moon is back in the spotlight, but this time, it's not just about planting flags and flexing muscles. Russia has launched its first spacecraft to the surface of the moon in nearly half a century. The so-called Luna 25 mission is seeking to put a robotic lander on the south pole of the moon. India became the world's first nation to reach the south pole of the moon on August 23rd. India is now on the moon. People are applauding. Mission control erupted in cheers as the Chandrayaan-3 landed in a part of the moon where no country has ever landed before. With the slim lander, Japan has made space history, becoming the fifth nation to execute a soft touchdown on the lunar surface. So far, only five countries, the US, Russia, China, Japan and India, have managed a soft landing on the moon. But hold on to your space helmets, because we might just have a new age space race on our hands. There's renewed interest in the moon. We're going back to learn to live in a deep space environment for long periods of time so that we can go to Mars and return safely. Why is everyone rushing back to the moon? Is it because they heard about the moon's killer real estate market? Not exactly. It's more about water and resources. Yup, the discovery of water and other valuable stuff up there has got nations and private companies eyeing the moon like it's the next big thing. Whoever gets to establish a significant lunar presence is making a statement about their political system, about their economic system, about who is ahead in the geopolitical competition. And guess who's making some serious moves? India. For India, it's a matter of national pride. This success belongs to all of humanity. And it will help moon missions by other countries in the future. That makes India the fourth country in the world to reach the moon after the United States, Russia and China. India is expected to get a lot of offers from other space agencies, foreign countries to launch like commercial satellites for them, which is going to be also a revenue earner for India. Now, India isn't just playing catch up. They're going for the gold with their Chandrayaan program. Chandrayaan, which means mooncraft in Sanskrit, is India's way of saying, we're here and we mean business. This isn't just about sending up a single satellite or doing a quick flyby. This program includes a lunar orbiter, an impactor, a soft lander and a rover. All part of the Indian Space Research Organization's or ISRO grand plan to explore the moon. Oh, and here's a little something for you. What do you call a tick on the moon? A lunatic. <laughs> now, before you drift off into space daydreams, don't forget to like this video, subscribe to our channel and hit that notification bell so you don't miss any updates. And while you're at it, check out some of our other videos. Trust me, they're out of this world. So let's talk about how humans have been racing to the moon. When it comes to moon missions, spacecraft are like different kinds of explorers with their missions. First up, we have flyby missions. These are like the space equivalent of a quick drive-by. The spacecraft just swings by, the moon snaps a few photos and heads home. Then there are orbiter missions, which are like the photographers of space. These guys hang around, orbiting the moon and capturing all the details from craters to mountains. Now, let's get a bit intense with hard landing missions, like a probe that crashes into the moon on purpose. Sometimes it's an accident, but other times it's a planned crash to kick up some moon dust for analysis. And finally, the grand prize of space exploration, the soft landings. 
These are the delicate landings where the spacecraft touches down gently on the lunar surface, all in one piece. Since the late 1960s, there have been over 20 successful soft landings, including NASA's epic Apollo missions, and by 2030, over 100 lunar missions are expected to go down. That's a lot of moonwalking in the works. So, why the sudden rush back to the moon? It's all about the H2O, baby. Water on the moon is a game changer. For years, scientists had a hunch there might be water up there, but it wasn't until India's Chandrayaan-1 mission on October 22nd, 2008, that they really started to get excited. This mission didn't just orbit the moon, it also sent an impactor crashing down to check out that precious water. Now, here's a cool fact. NASA's M3 instrument, onboard Chandrayaan-1, found water ice at the moon's poles. Yeah, ice, and it's hiding out in these permanently shadowed regions where the sun never shines. Water isn't just for drinking, it's rocket fuel in disguise. When you split water into oxygen and hydrogen and then reunite them, you get a powerful chemical reaction that can propel rockets. NASA's already cooking up plans to use this in their new space launch system rocket to send astronauts back to the moon. Who knew the moon could become a pit stop for refueling? Okay, this is totally off topic, but check out this dog getting hilariously bullied by a rooster. Let's move forward to Chandrayaan-2 on July 22nd, 2019. This mission was like the sequel to an epic movie with a little twist. The spacecraft had an orbiter, a lander named Vikram, and a rover called Pragyan. Everything was going smoothly, and the craft even reached lunar orbit on August 20th, 2019. Unfortunately, things went sideways when Vikram tried to land, literally, when a software error caused it to crash. But India wasn't giving up that easily. Enter Chandrayaan-3 in 2023, the comeback mission. Launched on July 14th, it made history by landing near the moon's south pole on August 23rd. India became the fourth country to pull off a moon landing, and this one was at the southernmost spot yet. It's a tiny six-wheeled rover, aptly named Pragyan, rolling around the moon like it's on a road trip, but instead of taking selfies, it's analyzing lunar soil. Pragyan isn't just cruising anywhere. It's exploring the moon's southern high latitude regions near the lunar south pole, which is like the moon's version of the Wild West, totally an unexplored area. So what did this little rover find? In just 10 days, Pragyan made 23 measurements over a 338 foot stretch. That's about the length of a football field and uncovered the moon's secrets like a detective on a mission. The rover detected a rock called Ferroan anorthosite, which is a fancy way of saying, hey, this looks like what Apollo 16 found back in 1972. So, what's the big deal? Well, finding similar rocks in different parts of the moon is like finding the same piece of a puzzle on opposite sides of a giant jigsaw. It helps confirm the long-standing theory that an ocean of magma once covered the moon. Yes, magma. Imagine the moon as a glowing hot lava ball billions of years ago. Pretty wild, right? Speaking of magma oceans, let's explore how the moon got its start. Scientists believe that around 4.5 billion years ago, a Mars-sized object, or possibly a cluster of them, collided with Earth, sending molten debris flying into space. The magma ocean that once covered the moon was hundreds to thousands of kilometers deep and lasted for about 100 million years. As it cooled, crystals began to form within it. Some rocks, like ferron anorthosite, floated to the surface to create the moon's crust, while others, like olivine, sank deep into the mantle. That fiery mess eventually solidified into the moon we know and love today. The first lunar samples collected during the Apollo missions challenged earlier theories that the moon was simply a random space rock caught in Earth's gravity. Nope, the moon has a far more dramatic origin story. But why should we care about rocks on the moon? Well, these minerals and rocks are like time capsules. 
They hold clues about the moon's history, and every mission that uncovers more of them helps us piece together how the moon, and by extension, Earth and other planets, came to be. Now, let me hit you with a question. Have you ever thought about what secrets the moon might still behind? Yeah, me neither. Until now, Chandrayaan-3 landed at a spot called Shiv Shakti Point, which is around 217 miles from the South Pole Aitken Basin, the oldest known crater on the moon. This crater is like the granddaddy of all craters, believed to be formed by an asteroid impact around 4.2 to 4.3 billion years ago. This impact unearthed magnesium-rich minerals like olivine, which mixed into the lunar soil. All right, back to the mission. The Chandrayaan-3 mission proves that landing spacecraft in different lunar regions is similar to unlocking new levels in a video game. Every new spot gives us more clues. This mission is the first to successfully land in the moon's polar regions and conduct in-situ analysis, which basically means it's getting the information straight from the source. These fresh measurements are boosting confidence in the lunar magma ocean hypothesis, and scientists are already planning the next steps. They want to explore the permanently shadowed regions of the lunar poles and bring back samples to Earth. Imagine the kind of discoveries we could make with that. While Earth's history has been scrambled by erosion and tectonic plates, the Moon is like a time capsule holding onto its secrets. But Chandrayaan 3's lander wasn't built to survive the bitter cold of the lunar night, so after 12 days, its mission ended with the sunset. But the propulsion module is still kicking. It went back into high Earth orbit on November 22, 2023, for more scientific observations and kept going strong until August 22, 2024. For watching this far into the video, here's a picture of four sleeping baby otters. Now, enough of that. India's Department of Space is rolling out some ambitious plans that have us all buzzing. First up, they're set to send their first astronaut into space next year. After that, they aim to establish a space station, the Bharatiya Antariksh Station, by 2030, and land an Indian on the moon by 2040. Sounds incredible, right? But here's the twist. These timelines have been pushed back by five years. Yep, space travel is no speedy express lane. Minister of Science and Technology, Dr. Jitendra Singh refers to these projects as cornerstone moves for India's space program. The Bharatiya Antariksh station will orbit around 248 miles above Earth, providing a home for astronauts for up to 20 days. Initially slated for completion by 2030, it's now aiming for 2035. The same goes for the moon landing. Instead of 2040, it's now set for 2045. So why the delay? India's mission to send an astronaut to space by 2025, called Gaganyan, was actually supposed to happen in 2022. But thanks to the pandemic and ISRO focusing on safety, because you know, space is dangerous, the date kept getting pushed. Gaganyan is designed to carry three crew members and orbit Earth for seven days. So fingers crossed for a smooth launch next year. And speaking of space milestones, after the success of Chandrayaan-3, get ready for Chandrayaan-4 and 5. These follow-up missions are already in the works. Chandrayaan-4, set for 2028, will bring back lunar samples and test space docking in lunar orbit. And Chandrayaan-5? That's all about setting up a long-term presence on the moon. Now, here's where things get spicy. India's space economy is booming, with over 300 startups popping up and investments totaling over 1,000 crore, that's about 120.5 million. India is becoming a major player in the space race. Minister Singh is hyped, predicting a quantum jump in India's space industry in the coming years. He even gave a shout out to Prime Minister Modi for creating the environment to make it all happen. According to Singh, India's always had the brains and talent, but it was missing the support system. That is, until now. So, what do you think? Is India ready to take on the space giants? Or are these delays just part of the game? Tell us in the comments below. If you thought this was the end, think again. If you're eager to see how this all fits into the bigger picture, 
Check out our video on the Artemis program. We'll break down NASA's plan to return to the moon in the coming years. It's like watching the sequel to your favorite movie. Skip it and you'll be completely lost. Trust me, understanding why this matters will make everything you just watched fall into place.